So March of 2023 was one of the best months of cash flow my portfolio has ever had. It was a great combination of both dividend income and covered call option premium. In this video, I'm gonna share with you just what happened to my portfolio balance over this month. I'm also gonna share with you how much income I generated and where this income came from. All right, here is the average Joe Investor cash flow report for March of 2023. Working with a little bit of a different format here. I got a lot of feedback from you guys indicating that the complexity involved in the previous spreadsheet was quite difficult to understand. So I'm keeping it very simple and straightforward here, looking at my portfolio, my cash flow, and breaking down where that income came from. First off, here's a look at the portfolio balance since January of 2021 to present. What this assumes compared to the S&P 500 is based on all the money I deposited into the account, if I'd instead just invested in the S&P 500 on those exact same dates and those exact same amounts, how these portfolios would have compared. And you'll notice here that except for this portion right here in late 2021, early 2022, my portfolio has by far beaten the S&P 500 when you factor in all the cash flow and the reinvested dividends. One thing to note here is while you see the day-to-day -day adjustments in the S&P 500, I don't keep daily tabulations of the actual portfolio balance in my portfolio. So you just see the month ending balance here. You would see a little bit more volatility than you see right here, like you see with the S&P 500. In case you weren't aware, this spreadsheet and all all of the other spreadsheets I showcase on my videos are available as part of being part of the Average Joe Investor Patreon community. Additionally, you get access to my portfolio updates and all of the covered call options that I sell during the month. By far and away, the best benefit you get here is being part of the Average Joe Investor Discord community. Over 300 different members average Joe investors, learning about selling options, how to buy quality dividend stocks, and learning from each other. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out the link down in the description below. Here's the breakdown of income for March of 2023. We had income from, what was it, 12, 14 different positions here. Best Buy, Colgate Palmolive, Devon Energy, Hewlett Packard, Medical Properties Trust, Starbucks, SCHD, S&P 500, Stanley Black & Decker, T. Rowe Price, Whirlpool, ExxonMobil, the Russell 2000 ETF, and Intel Corporation. And you'll see that the majority of the income came from five different positions. SCHD made up 14%, SPY 21%, Whirlpool 14%, ExxonMobil 10%, and the Russell 2000 ETF 11%. We also had quite a bit of income coming in from Devon Energy at 6%, T. Rowe Price, 8%, and Stanley Black & Decker, 7%. Here's my dividend income for the month, which was a larger month because I had most of my positions actually having a dividend being paid out on a quarterly basis this month, including Schwab's SCHD at 262.29, and Whirlpool at 177, T. Rowe Price at 124, ExxonMobil at 91, and Devon Energy at 89. And here is the total of my dividend income for March of 2023. $936.03, but this made up only a portion of the income for the month. I've made an intentional effort here to pick dividend stocks that have, yes, some dividend payments, they're dividend stocks, and I only write covered calls on either ETFs such as SPY, the S&P 500, and SCHD, or quality dividend stocks. But I also pick dividend stocks that have the ability to write covered calls with a fair amount of option premium. Therefore, I will sacrifice a little bit of the high dividend yield if I can get really good option premium on a monthly basis. So $936.03 in dividend income for the month. Let's talk about the covered call option income. Pretty much every position in my portfolio had option premium. And you notice that the breakdown in the transactions, there are quite a bit of bought closing transaction call, as well as scrolling down here, open transaction call. All of these opening transaction calls are when I write a new covered call at a position in my portfolio. This is the credit that I received for doing so. And I did it pretty much on every position. The Russell 2000, Best Buy, Devon Energy, Colgate Palmolive, HP Medical Properties, Starbucks, Schwab's SCHD, S&P 500, you can see quite a bit of activity here. Stanley Black & Decker, T. Rowe Price, Whirlpool, and ExxonMobil. The reason why there are both opening transaction calls and closing transaction calls is because when I sell a new covered call, I also at the exact same time immediately create a buy to close order at a 90% profit target, meaning that I hope to close this position at a price much less than I originally received. For example, if I write a new covered call and receive $100, my goal is not to necessarily hold that option all the way until it expires, though I'm open to doing so. My goal would be able to buy that option back 
for a fraction of what I received for it, hopefully around 10 cents on the dollar or a 90% profit target. And you see this occur quite a few times in this transaction history where I write an option and then I buy that option back for a significant profit. All of these transactions are tracked here to get a netted total option premium. And here is that total covered call income, $2,523.09 for the month. And when you factor in both the dividend income and the covered call income, you'll see that my total cash flow is $3,459.12 for the month. And it just barely makes second place on my historical cash flow. You see, I had a big spike here in September of 2022, where I had 36, 37, and 67 cents. And this is just short of that at 34.59. These months down here, are not as valuable because I wasn't really writing covered calls in the portfolio here. Here's where I started to do that down in here, where income ranged from as high as 3637 down to 2376, 2621, 1907, 1953, and then up here again to 3459. Again, to be very clear on my strategy, number one, I own quality dividend stocks, and I pair that with the S&P 500, the Schwab Dividend ETF SCHD, and the Russell 2000 ETF, IWM. The purpose for holding IWM and SPY is to get a fair amount of option premium when I write those covered calls. I do write calls on SCHD, though I don't get as much income there, but the goal is not to necessarily get a ton of option premium from SCHD. It is my foundational dividend holding in the portfolio. And the reason why I choose quality dividend stocks is if my stock price takes a dive way below its cost basis, I still have the option to write covered calls if I want to. And we're gonna talk about that for the month of April because it didn't quite work out for me as well. So lots to talk about there. But if I choose, I can just hold off on writing covered calls and just wait for the price to come up. But in the meantime, I still get to collect dividend income. Hopefully you found some value in this video. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to all comments left on the day I post a video. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.